All right, welcome back, welcome back, ladies and gents, to the MVM show. My co-hosts are here, Michael, today, and you know when Michael's here. <laughs> it's, it's Trump not, it's not hour. Much, yeah, it's <laughs> duck talk. It's Trump hour. <laughs> Trump, what do You're you gonna think about it. what's going on? It's going to be absolutely fantastic. It's going to be great. <laughs> okay? It's going to be the best one you've What heard. do you think about Putin and Trump right now? What do I think about Putin? Are, are you and are you Trump? Are you and Putin friends? <laughs> <laughs> you know what? He's a good guy, but uh, real evil, real bad guy. He needs to be put down. You know, he never would have invaded Ukraine with me in office. He knows that for a fact. You don't do that. <laughs> you don't do that. Don't mess with the USA. Yeah. yeah. Okay. We're the best. Don't mess. Don't mess the with US. us. Okay. Yeah. Don't happen. <laughs> <laughs> there it is, folks. We finally got him to do it. That Trump. Trump might be back in in this episode, but what, what we want to talk about is what is going on right now, and that is this whole Ukraine, I don't want to, I'm going to say deal. Conflict. A, yeah, conflict, and I've got some, quite a bit of notes. I'm going to play a little bit of stuff. Michael's, we're both going to give our input. Um, some of you guys actually had asked, and I planned on doing it anyways, but some had asked, like, hey, I want to hear your thoughts on the Ukraine deal, what's going on over there. So here we is. We're about to give it to you. And, uh, man, we're, where do we start? Let me ask you this. What do you think is being covered up right now because of this? There's got to be something there, too. Like what America's covering up? or I, I don't know. Because really, really, it's like... Or, or what are we trying to slip on? What are they trying to slip under the sheets while this is all over the media, you know? There, there's just a lot of things that don't add up. I was just talking to friends and stuff about this yesterday. The whole thing, and if you listen to talk radio, they kind of talk about this kind of stuff because there's a whole lot doesn't add up. Like mm -hmm. when the invasion happened, and I and I thought I personally thought like, oh, Ukraine's gonna be taken over in like less than a week, right? right they're gonna right. just be annihilated, country, right? Yeah. They're gonna happen. So they're not gonna be able to hold up against the against Russia, and and it, like after a while, you're like really like they're like still fighting back, and it's still going on, and yeah. like they're they're like they're, it's almost like Russia's losing the battle, kind of mm. right. Um, and when you hear like Ukraine, their like their internet access is is uh, owned by by Russia. It's like government owned mm. internet, you know, access mm -hmm. there. <clears throat> and if if you were if you were Russia, if you were a, a country that's wanting to invade a, a country, another country, and take it over, you would want to take out their communications, right? Their, inter yeah, for their sure. internet access, because mm -hmm. what's Ukraine do? They're posting like videos of all like of negative things, right? Of what's happening mm -hmm. in their country, and mm -hmm. it's like the world's outlook and what happened from that is, you know, country. The companies are pulling out of Russia. You got like every, everybody's pulling out, right? Mm -hmm. Like McDonald's are shutting down in Russia, mm -hmm. right? Um, and just every company is pulling out. They're 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 not, you know, they're not wanting to do business there, so. Um, you would think that Russia would have shut that down, and just so many things just don't kind of don't add up. So it's really yeah. it's really weird. So I, I think there's a whole lot that's going on that we're not really privy to. Um, and the way you the 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 Biden presidency has responded is it, I don't you don't laughable. Really know what yeah, it's just really actually it's not laughable. People say it's a joke and it's laughable. It's actually not laughable. This is our country. Yeah, and that's who's running it, and it's right. a joke. There's no fear there, you know, Biden, Biden's going around saying, and this was one of the things I want to talk about, Biden's going around saying, we, we, we need to be scared. And he's putting on this, this uh, fearful persona that's saying that we need, you know, we kind of basically need to dance around uh, Russia because they are a, a uh, nuclear power. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, but so are we. Right. So why are we in the United States? I mean, obviously, that is not something you want to come to pass. I mean, if you think about how wicked and corrupt people are, it's it really is amazing that we have never got in a serious nuclear, and I'm talking in our home front here in the United States of America, because if people are this crazy, money-hungry, power-hungry, how has this not even happened yet, really, if you think about it? And it's so scary to think of because it's a devastating, I mean, it's a... I can't even imagine if it comes to nuclear warfare, you know, but like Trump was saying, you know, we can't, we're coming across as a scared country and we don't, we should not be coming across that. We should yeah. be asserting dominance and, you know, showing our hand right? what we got. Well, and I think 
all all countries know that the USA is a huge power, mm-hmm. and we we're, the, we're we are still the most powerful country as far as like military wise. I th- I believe that we're still the mm-hmm. we could take over you know any other place. Mm-hmm. I, I I personally believe that, and nobody really wants to pick a fight directly with the United States. Yeah, they'll. They'll steal our money, right. our lunch money, in yeah. different ways, and then. Literally. But here's the thing: that's we allow them to do that, <laughs> mm. and what what's happened recently, as is my personal belief, is you get it, and why this what this happens now, as opposed to you know three years ago or two years ago, um, is we've kind of showed who we are. You know, the president, mm. the Biden presidency, has kind of shown who they are. Um, you know, if, if I'm going to go steal somebody's money, I'm going to eye a few guys. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to pick the biggest guy out there with the biggest guns. <laughs> you right. know, I'm going to pick the twerp, right? Yeah. And the guy, or at least, you know, the guy that doesn't know how to, how to hold his own. Mm-hmm. Um, that, and that's what we, it's almost like we have a big gun. Yeah. But the guy running we're, it, we're not, we're not willing to fire it right now. We're not willing to yeah. do it. And I think when Trump was in office, he was the guy. He was the guy that was holding the gun and he was pointing it at you and he had his finger on the trigger and it was kind of his finger was kind of twitching a little bit. <laughs> yeah. So you're like, uh, <laughs> I yeah. don't know if the, if we want to like mess with this guy. Yeah. And he may have been just been joking. He, he, it was just poker face. Right. 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 But he put on a good poker face to say, you don't know what I'm going to do. Yeah. And he'll look you in the eye and tell you, you know, you need to stop this. He would just tell countries yeah. you need to start putting in your, your fair share. Yeah. You know, or we're going to pull out, you know. Yeah. And internationally, I didn't think initially when he went in, I didn't think he'd be a good president internationally, but he was really good. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I personally think, and the way he he dealt with other countries and yeah. doing their fair share, because we're in a lot of like, um, you know, global markets and kind of going in with everybody else on different things. Mm-hmm. And, um, but I'm pretty sure that we're putting a lot more than some of these other countries are. Yeah. So, but yeah, it, and this well, is the and thing here's, too, is, the, here's the thing: it's kind of like. He's a he's a businessman. That's what he's known for, and that's what he's been successful at. And and something that was said the other day is, it's ninety or ninety three percent of all presidents have been politicians. That's all they've ever done. And I feel like sometimes a lot of those guys don't have a, an awareness of reality because they've went from college to this little political thing to this little and they move their way up. And like seven or ten percent of them have been military. Which I think, personally, that should be a big factor, and whether you're president or not, or you should even be for the election, you know, even be able to be nominated as one. But that's it, dude. Seven to ten percent of all U.S. presidents have even been military. Not saying, like I said, they 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 have to be. Right. But the difference with Trump was, and I know he's a human too, and he makes some mistakes, and there's stuff we probably don't agree with the way he does. But it's like the fact that he was a working class and worked his way up. He can know the mind of the people better and know how to take care of our country financially, plus in a lot of other ways, too. More than I would have thought originally, yeah. you know, kind of well, like think, you're saying. Well, I think, too, he knew the best people. He knew who to come in and do the right job. So yeah. he knows the best people. Yeah, <laughs> every time. <laughs> and, and, and really, that's true. Like, mm-hmm. he, I, I don't think he, he would know a lot. He would get a lot of input on everybody mm-hmm. from everybody. Like, what, what do we do in this situation? You know, and like he would be the the main lead on it, but he'd have to get the input from the people that, you know, military generals, mm-hmm. and, you know, different. Well, that's what he members. said. He said in a recent podcast, and I guess we'll just jump right into that too. So, I've heard of these guys for a long time, but they're they're just kind of, I don't know what's transpired over the years, but there was a bunch of crazy guys. All they did is party and did all this stuff, but the one guy, and I don't know if he's been so much of that kind of guy. He's really smart, actually, um, and I can't think of his name right now. But they started the Full Sin podcast, and he came on that podcast, and it's still up on Spotify, but Trump came on there, actually. I mean, they're well, well known, and they've got a big following, and and probably a lot of younger people, which is good, because, I mean, we're the ones coming up in this, and we're the ones may, voting and making these decisions, and the ones that are going to be in office later on, so it's like you want to make an impression on those people. And he called it in the podcast. He said, they're going to take this down. What are you going to do? And he was kind of calling them out. And they were like, we're, we're not like that. We'll stand strong. We're, we're going to stand. We're, we don't care. And they, they have so far. They have actually really fought it. And sure. YouTube took it down. I mean, it wasn't even 24, barely 24 hours. And YouTube actually took it down. And um, the thing is, well, I don't want to jump ahead to, to my deal, but... Um, now I can't remember the full thing where I was going with that, but it's that quick 
that even somebody that is not like a, I'm trying to think of a, the guy's name that people think he's crazy kind of he's real aggressive in his talking but Alex Jones Alex Jones <laughs> he's not he, these are just typical young guys right yeah. and they're the kind of guys like Joe Rogan was and I guess Trump told Joe Rogan don't apologize which I kind of I didn't lose respect for Joe Rogan I don't really listen to him just there's a lot of foul language on there but I do try to keep on the little clips they'll have of what their conversations are with certain subjects and I didn't lose respect for him, but I was like, dude, don't, what are you apologizing for? You know, you yeah. have the tiger by the tail. You can do whatever you want to do. People want to hear your voice, yeah. you know, and I guess Trump said that he told him, don't apologize or send a message out. Don't apologize. And he ended up getting on there and apologizing. I was like, dude, you didn't need to apologize. Right. It wasn't changing anything. Like yeah. it, you weren't losing a following. You weren't, nothing was happening to you. Just a few Random seniors nobody even knows about anymore will pull yeah, it off yeah, Spotify. Exactly. And he could go any other platform. They'd pay him right now to come on there, you know? Oh, yeah. But these guys, jumping around all that to say this, these guys are young guys, and that's the most people that are on all these podcasts. Guaranteed even on this one, the majority are 30 and down that are listening to these, you know? Yeah. And so for them to be open-minded, they would have – they wouldn't just – and they said it on there. They wouldn't just have Trump. They'd have Biden if he would too, but he won't come on there. You know sure. what I mean? So yeah. they are – I know they have their beliefs, and I would say they're probably more conservative, but they would still, just like I do, I still want to hear both sides. I don't right. mind. It's just conversation. Yeah. If we can, as humans, sit around and talk about something and not fight like little kids, right? then we're pretty immature, I think, you know? Yeah. Yeah, it's a big problem. And, that, and that's what happens nowadays. It's like yeah, everybody's – you just if it's your way or the highway and I, I am saying that I will stand forever on what I believe in, even if I'm by myself. But I will sit there and listen to your side to hear you out. Yeah. I'm not gonna just shut you down and act like an idiot and plug my ears and la la la. You know, it's like and that's what it feels like people do nowadays. They they just don't even listen. Right. I seen something pretty neat the other day. It was a it was a quote. It was talking about Nobody listens anymore. It's so true. I, and I was talking to myself. When I read that, I was like, dude, you, you have that problem too. They said, if some, if you're thinking about what you're going to say next, yeah, you're, not listening. you're not listening to that person. And I'm like, yeah. man, I do that bad, you know? Right. So I need to start listening more, start yeah. paying attention. That's, that's kind of why I like these podcasts. I hate to say this, but we've, I'm guilty of it. Find yourself getting too busy to really just sit down and have a conversation with people anymore. Right. You know, like here you're forced to like listen, respond, come up, and we'll sit here for an hour and we'll talk. And it's it's like, man, we need to do that more. Yeah. Not just on recorded device. Right, yeah, yeah, just have a conversation. Yeah. We're too busy like in this mode right here. Yep, we're, looking at our phones. Know, doing something, even like get-togethers and little parties and stuff like that. That's just, you know, it's just mm-hmm. like we're stuck to it. Yeah. So what's, so what is your – what's your thoughts on, on the conflict? I mean, I, I – I, uh, I think most people like we're for the people of Ukraine. You know, you, you don't want anybody to get invaded, no, man. And, and they obviously want their sovereignty. You know, they don't want to be invaded, and run by, and you know, have Russia establish their own leader and their own their own government, which is basically basically gonna be like a puppet, mm-hmm. you know, for Russia. Um, but and what's your thoughts? When someone asked that, like, would like to hear your thoughts on it, I thought to myself, I was like, man, I I've been thinking about it, and I've been trying to come up with something. I was like. I'm almost kind of like I haven't even formed one yet because there's been so much going on. Okay, first off, let me re let me back up. War is horrible. I'll tell you, this was my first impressions when this went on. It made me sick to my stomach when I started seeing it. Actually, live footage of shooting going on, and I'm talking cars that are like these cars, right? Because when you, I'll be honest with you, when you look at Afghanistan, all that stuff, and people are on camels and old, old cars from the 70s, and it, it's just they're in dirt buildings. It's not that I don't have compassion on them, but it's not as relatable because it doesn't, it's like you don't feel like you're, it's like that's a different time zone, even though it's now, here and now, yeah. during the Afghanistan war and all that stuff. But when you're looking at houses that are like ours and, and you're looking at urban stuff and you're looking at cars that look like ours, that i seen a Toyota Corolla, looks like it was brand new over there, and the, the family is getting out of it and running. You can hear gunshots. Russians are shooting at them. And it's like this was live, and I was like, my God, war is such a horrible, horrible thing, dude. Yeah. And 
now being that I have been there, I'm almost like one of those guys now. I'm just like, I hate war. Like, do whatever it takes not to go to war, to have yeah. fights. You know, World War Three has been starting to get thrown out around a lot. And I don't feel like, maybe I'm wrong, but I don't feel like in the past people just throw that word around. Because media wants to blow everything up, right? But I don't even feel like the media has done that in the past with Afghanistan, Iraq, all this stuff. Yeah. But it's getting thrown around a lot. And I even... I don't pay no attention to what the media says. I don't even really watch it. I watch a little stuff on YouTube, but I don't watch CNN, Fox, none of those guys. Oh, yeah, same here. Maybe a little bit of OAN. But uh, my emotions and my mindset is like, dude, th this actually really is a possibility. Like, it legitimately is because when – it's one thing when they go into Ukraine that's not a um, – they're not a uh, part of the uh, – NATO. NATO. But everyone around them is. Yeah. I mean, they're they're an, they are a few steps from yeah. crossing that line to where now it turns in to it. Yeah. So it is almost got me kind of sick. One of my friends is a prior military. He's older too, though, so there's no way. But he's like, man, someone had asked me that doesn't know nothing about the military. They were like, do you think we're gonna have a, a draft if that ever came to that? And I said, dude, draft is the like the last of the last of the last. Right. World War II was going on for quite a while before that ever even came to that. And the thing is, there's steps that happen there. It's, it basically, it starts uh, with, you know, you got your people that are already, already in the military. Then it goes, if they start a draft, it goes from the young bucks, single. And, you know, like, they're the ones that get drafted. And if they need more people, then they'll go to the younger one. Maybe only they're married. And they'll pull those guys. And then yeah. it just moves on to there. And, I mean, if they're that desperate, yeah, they might pull my friend in that's 60 years old old Chinook guy that could come in. He'll never go overseas. He'll just stay here and train stateside. But it's like, man, you know, don't stress out there if people, I know people are out there listening to this that think about that kind of stuff, right? And it's yeah. like, I wouldn't even stress about that. But at the same time, I do think it's like a reality. Just like people, oh, gas, my friend said, oh, gas will never go to $10 a gallon. That was when it was four fifty. I go, dude, it's going to 10 He's like, no way. He's old. People are coming up for re-election. All this stuff's going on. And look who we are. Stockton, they're over $9 a gallon for really? regular unleaded. Yes, wow. off of Hammer Lane. Actually, Bobby Rick showed me that last night, and I thought it was a picture from someone else. He goes, I took that picture. I'm like, you're kidding. Because hmm. you know how it is. You can't trust anything you see online. Yeah. People are always posting that kind of stuff, like what gas prices are, where. But I know, I, I guarantee you, the listeners down in L.A., I'd be curious what you guys say gas is down there right now. I mean, we could research it, but anyways, that was yeah. a long circle to come back to. I hate this, dude. Like, yeah, why? You know, like, I no, mean, the I, Bible I, says the the Bible's the Bible says the world's waxing worse and worse. So yeah. that's the number one problem. Oh yeah, this is biblically uh, coming to pass. This is coming to pass because of biblical prophecies. Yeah, and so, and and what he tells us to do, if you if you are a believer out there, if you have Jesus living your life, he says, look up for your redemption, John tonight. So I'm not stressed. I'm not worried. I'm not going to stress about all these things and 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 war and if they're going to call us back and all this stuff. Do I want to do that? No. Right. But I have a bigger power than Putin. I have a bigger power than Biden <laughs> that has all controls. So yeah. my deal is, is, you know, I stand with Ukraine and those innocent people over there. Um, the kids, it's, it, and it's so stupid because the kids are such the innocent people, but yet they're the ones that take the beating, right? Oh yeah, it's it's, it's stupid. Yeah, really. And I don't, I don't think anybody wants to get in the conflict as far as the United States getting yeah. involved. We don't want to get another. We're tired of it. We're, yeah, we're done. Twenty-one with years in Afghanistan. Yeah, yeah, we don't want to get involved in somebody else's fight. And yeah. that's, I think, somewhat we're, we're kind of reluctant to to do anything or to, you know, close our airspace and shoot down a, a Russian plane or something like that and mm. start something. Because then it just kind of gives them an excuse to do something back to us, I think. So oh, dude, I, yeah. I, I can kind of see that. And and really, this, I mean, if you're a prepper, if you're like, if you mm. if you have like a food storage and ammo, and you're kind of just you're kind of prepped, then you know you're you're like, hey, this is you know the kind of stuff that I, I prepare for mm. if something was to was to happen. But you know, and, and if you don't, 
then yeah, you need to have some kind of like food storage. Yeah. And this is for any kind of thing, not just like war. This is it's common sense. It's just yeah. Well, I say that, but a lot of us don't. I mean, I don't even have prepared like I should. You know. Yeah. It's like, eh. and we're and like not just food, but well, you said prepping. You didn't really n- pick out food, but like, you know, uh, matches, candles. Oh yeah, everything. Lan- just anything that if power goes out, cell service, batteries, and all you know, yeah. generator. Mm-hmm. You know, some people don't have a generator, so. Yeah. Um, yeah, just make sure you're prepared for any kind of... And don't wait know. till it's already too late and then there's the shelves are empty, you know? Oh, yeah. Stock up on your TP now. You know, that's the number one thing everybody <laughs> needs. That <laughs> still blows my mind. My God. Oh, yeah. Toilet paper? Yep. That's what you go for when something's going down? You know, you know what's funny is my, my brother just bought a house and every every toilet in that house is has a bidet <laughs> uh, <laughs> and they're new they're like within the last year i said i said they just gave them the whole james's house no he doesn't i said i said i said i bet you that person whoever at the house i said they just gave up on the toilet there. paper <laughs> and they just went out and bought bidets <laughs> all his bathrooms have bidets yeah. you're kidding me oh yeah he's all walking to the bathroom i'll walk in and the toilet seat just goes like automatically no right? way. like it senses you and Did like it, it warms the water i don't know if he uses it Oh yeah, he does. No, of course. Way. I'd be scared too. Like, ah. <laughs> he said it was like warm water. <laughs> you can make a the, nice little. Flush. You can change the direction of the of the, I don't know the stream or whatever it is. You're kidding. <laughs> <laughs> in case the the sphincter is in different positions for different people, dude. <laughs> a little under ah. a little undercarriage wash. <laughs> So, oh, dude, <laughs> no, <laughs> I would be so tense if I had to sit on those. Ah. <laughs> I've heard some funny stories. Of people saying somehow like super high water pressure. Oh, yeah, that wouldn't be that wouldn't be, or cold. That, that, that would that would be very damage, unpleasant, dude. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> how'd we get off on that, dude? Um, craziness. Yeah, yeah it's just uh, okay. Here's something he brought out, and I never thought of this, and I didn't know this because I don't keep up on a lot of foreign stuff, and I wish I was better at that. But at the same time, sometimes you can get it gets negative, and you just I don't want to be bombarding my life with negative things. But he did say this, and this I'll call it, when he said this, it kind of confirmed my thoughts of a possible another world war. I was like, oh man, I hope please God don't let it go to that because he said right now, Germany and Japan, which were our biggest enemy enemies. Back in the day, I mean, we're not now, right? Yeah. They are rebuilding, both of them are rebuilding their armies. Oh, yeah. No, I heard that. That ain't good. <laughs> yeah. That's not good. I guess people were like, oh, yeah, congratulations. You know, they're working on doing, making a better army. I'm thinking, hold on here. Why are they doing that right now all of a sudden when Ukraine starts rolling? Yeah. Really yeah, and, weird, and, dude. And really. And, it, and that don't happen overnight. I mean, right, I'm not saying yeah. like, oh man, tomorrow, you know, it, I mean, it's going to take a year or two years, you know, to build all that stuff up. But I'm like, this is, mm, these aren't good signs. Right. And it, and it seems like when you look at different things that, that are happening, it's almost like whoever's in charge of the United, of the U.S., because really it ain't Biden. He's, no, exactly. he's like he's a, a puppet. puppet. Mm. Um, and you could tell like, cause he's just. He's got handlers. What do you, what, what goes, do you he's say? Got handlers. What do you say at that speech? Oh yeah, said? at the end of his, his uh, State of the Union <laughs> speech, it says he says, "Go get him." <laughs> like, go get who? Go get Biden. And it was at the end of his speech. It was right? at the end of his speech. And he said, "Go get him." <laughs> and my my theory is that it was his handlers. <laughs> it was a note to his handlers to say, "Go get him off the platform." Yeah. Before he said something stupid, and he already did it anyways. Because <laughs> he just like he his his battle with the teleprompter is like terrible. He just <laughs> oh he, he always lo- he loses every single time and throw a number on there, he his mind just goes nuts and you can ha- have the number wrote out seventy five million people whatever like that and he'll make it billion or he'll change the number seventy five thousand or whatever, you know he'll he'll mess it up if it's a number. Well, um, and the stupidity of our leadership is is what again kind of reiterating what we already said is what makes people you know other countries look at us like what a joke right because yeah. that's what they're seeing. Yeah, I know. Though I think deep down, people know because of our history that we're gonna fight. If we gotta fight now, now saying what I said earlier about war is stupid, I don't want to do it. I will fight if it yeah. comes to my home front. I will fight. You know, if I was in the military and I, they wanted me to go Ukraine, well, that I knew when I was in there, anything that's going on during that time, I'm a part of. Yeah. Right now, am I volunteering to go do that? No. It comes to my home front, though. Um, I'm gonna play this talking about the stupidity of. Uh, our leadership, and we'll end this one pretty quick. Um, there let, me, there, let me play this clip of clip of uh, Kamala 
when they, she was asked about the Ukrainian Ukrainian refugees. So we're we're talking about people's lives. We're talking about people's homes. We're talking about people's freedoms. All these things. She's asked, what, what are we going to basically do? Listen to this. Let's see. And I'm wondering what the United States is going to do more specifically to set up a permanent infrastructure. And relatedly, is the United States willing to make a specific allocation for Ukrainian refugees? And for President Duda, I wanted to know if you think, and if you asked the United States... To listen, listen to her cackle refugees. right here. Okay. <laughs> right there. And then a her... friend in need is a friend indeed. <laughs> okay, uh, yeah. no, she has no idea. No idea. None. Okay. So... And I'm wondering what... That's... There was another, there's that another one too. There was another one where she gets asked uh, a question. It's re- even more recently than that. And it's, it's the same thing. Like, she has no idea how to answer the question. But, I mean, the fact that I get... Because she, she's so stupid that she actually will laugh when she don't know an answer. Yeah. But we're talking about people getting killed and died. Innocent people. Yeah. And she laughs. Right. And there was a reason she said that a friend in deed, need is a friend in deed or whatever. But it's like, you can't just say we're trying. I'm not even the vice president. Yeah. And I could say... We're doing our best to protect these people and to stand in the gap and try to get them supplies and to make you know make them at least as comfortable as possible. Yeah, she can't even do that. Oh yeah, she no. just she looks over <laughs> at at the president of uh, Poland, Poland, and yeah. it's like, ha, 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 ha. like help me it's out like, here. <laughs> yeah, like dude, you're an idiot. The other the other interview question that was kind of got brought up or kind of trended a little bit was somebody asked her about like inflation and gas prices here in the United States and then she's overseas right now. Mm-hmm. Um and she like went on some rant about Syria or something like that or Iran or it was like you like okay, did you even listen to the question? Yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I, I don't know. She's she's not there. She's I not. mean like Well, she's just not she's just <laughs> she, she the only reason she's in that job is because of her skin color. Yeah. That's and that's well, that's and that's what everybody. That's what that he said. And what that, she does, you know, immorally too. Yeah, you but know, that, to that's the reason up. why Biden. And that's what he put it out there. This is the reason why. This is who I'm picking because is, of this is a black skinned uh, American. Mm-hmm. So that's why she's chosen, not and because of her about, qualifications. And think about all the people that could have been an amazing vice president. Yeah, like uh, uh, oh, what's her name? She's that's, awesome. Uh, she's not. I don't know if she's in. She's in politics. You like know. a commentator or, uh, or is she oh, an man. actual uh, politician? Goodness. I can see her face, literally see her face, but I keep wanting to say another name, and I'm not going to say it because it would be funny. She's in politics, too, this other lady. I'm thinking of that. Oh, my goodness. She's young. She's a young uh, black lady. May- awesome. Very well speaker. My goodness. I'm going to look it up. I can't. <laughs> this, I have to know the answer to this one. But And that's the that's problem when you when you select somebody, no matter for what, if you're selecting somebody based on a characteristic and not their qualifications, exactly. I mean, that's and it doesn't has nothing to do with, yeah, you know, what color or skin they are. And and really, that's and like I was saying earlier, this is it seems like somebody higher up is is wanting America to fail because right now, what are they saying? Like, because the big the big thing right now is is gas prices. Yeah, and so they're like, uh, and all you're hearing is they're blaming Putin. Oh, Putin's the reason why your your gas prices are so high. Putin's the reason why meat and bread is so high. It's, no, I mean, gas prices went up like soon after he took office because mm. day one of Candace Owens. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's what I was thinking about. She's not, she's not a politician. No, she's well, just a pol- I, I, political commentator. I mean. Yeah. Um, Even I'm saying something like her. Yeah. Because having the knowledge of stuff is what matters. Right. And the political, the only way you can be a political commentator is if you you know they these guys know stuff. Yeah, like they're very smart. You yeah. Know? But anyway, sorry. Go ahead. But um, like day one, day one of the of the the Biden presidency, the first thing he did was cancel the Keystone XL pipeline. Mm, right. And I, how many jobs that that eliminated at that moment? Yeah. You know. But right. immediately, even though like they're saying now, like what you know the the they asked him. Um, have you thought about reinstating and, and beginning constru- re- restarting construction on the on the Keystone Pipeline? They're like, no, because that's not gonna that's not gonna change anything right now. And it's like, well, it, it it does change the the futures of of oil. Yeah. Um, it will change that. And the thing that really stinks is like the moment he he canceled that 
that that pipeline, mm-hmm. gas prices shot up because they're thinking like we're not going to get much supply right now. right and the and the the gas prices always shoot up because of something that happens even yep. though the gas hasn't changed our, our supply hasn't really changed mm-hmm. it's just the futures outlook and then it shoots exactly up. um but then like to to go back like once uh if they were to reinstate that it's not immediately going to go back down to what it was if this conflict ends it's not gonna be like it's not immediately going to go down to what it was and i don't I don't no, understand I don't. why that is. It, there's I always don't. like a. It's always like it shoots back. It shoots up, but then it's like a slow gradual yep. going back down. And that's what happened. That's what we've seen with the with the Trump presidency too. And he he allowed a lot of things and opened a lot of things up. Um, just allowing people and signing their permits off, whatever he, mm. he needed to do is just. And when you look at it too, it, in in his presidency, we became an exporter of energy. I think uh, like one of the first times or something like that. Mm. We came a lar- We became a large exporter of energy. Whereas now we we buy so much right now um, because I mean they just said like oh you know we want to become an exporter it's like well we were before you guys got in office yeah and you guys changed all these things and started buying oil from you know Iran or Russia and all the other places and we're still buying it from Russia we're we're funding their war mm-hmm. and you know it's just it's ridiculous and then like their sanctions they say that they were gonna oh, do yeah. it's like yeah we're gonna sanction you uh, you know we're not gonna buy any more of your Twinkies yeah. But we'll still buy your gas. Yeah, it's like, right. Well, that's what they sell. Dude, they sell oil. Yeah, <laughs> you know, it's like it didn't really, it didn't hurt them at all. No, it's like you didn't. Well, you don't because go to the for money, the, it's it, they're trying to make a look to me to the public, but behind the scenes, like, well, we're still, we're still work together with you. We'll still, you know, trade and do this stuff with you. I'm like, dude, yeah. you guys are shysters, man. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> like seriously, but um, I think, I mean, I think for the most part, that's mostly what I was. I feel kind of weird because I don't feel like I gave I gave my thoughts, but I just don't know. There's, it's not there's deep. a lot. I don't have a lot of. There's a lot of thoughts there, but it's not super deep. I don't got all these crazy why this happened. I know that there's a lot more people that could bring all these different angles in, but that's just my right off the top of the head. And as this thing progresses, we will probably have more stuff on it. If it does, I hope it don't. I hope it digresses, yeah. but I don't know, man. Stuff's changing every day. We're here locally. Um, I've been seeing seven dollars for diesel right now. A lot of six dollar places for regular. Some most of it still seems like high fives, I think, but a lot of yeah. places are in the sixes right now. It's climbing like every day. Yeah, I should have been taking pictures of my Chevron, which I don't go there anyways, but because they're so high. Yeah, but I should every day I drive by that Chevron sign. I should just take and see because you you kind of don't notice it because right. you every day you're driving by stuff, but it's that bad that even you notice it every day. You're like. Holy moly! Yeah, you went up another ten cents again, or fifteen or twenty. I I usually try to like go out of my way to find a Costco because yeah. their gas is usually pretty pretty cheap. Yeah, and um, I think I looked recently and it's like they're they're over all over the fives now. I think you can even I mean you can look at their warehouse and they'll give you the gas prices and stuff. Mm-hmm. Like right now at our local one, it's uh, five seventeen. For regular, for regular, which is I think is that's, still pretty cheap because everything else. I seen is the only place I seen the day was five hundred three, and of course that's always cash. I don't know if right. do they do that too. It's all card with them. Oh, so you can you you're gonna get what card. you pay for. Yeah, no matter if you cash or card. Yeah, and then like in like L.A. area, five twenty nine for regular at Costco. At Costco. Wow, so. I bet you their pumps are loaded. Oh, I how is it right now when there. you go over there? Like, it's usually pretty. Well, it depends on what day you, what time of the day you go. Uh. If you go like, um, like eight or nine o'clock, I think people are kind of at work, so they're not really gonna mm. hit the pumps. But if you go like around lunch, it can get a little long, and then afternoon it's just get in line, like grab a sandwich or something like that. Because it's, it's gonna be a while. Wow. Yeah, you'll you'll wait. For me, it's not really worth waiting in a long line like that because you're gonna you're gonna what use gas to, <laughs> to <sit in> the <laughs> <Yeah>. line, <laughs> suck it so, up just to do that. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's it's pretty crazy, and and all it, I really. There, there is so many things at play that we don't even understand. I, don't I know, understand the whole, I know. We just get little tidbits of information, and you know, I act like I, I, I you know, or think I, I, I know. know more on it. But in all reality, like, but even then, to me, to be honest with you, even guys that do know a lot of things, I still think they don't even. I think they just know inf- more information oh, yeah. to share. That's the only difference. But they don't know really the background yeah. of really what's going on. You know yeah. what I mean? Oh yeah. So yeah, you got us that know a little bit. You got some guys that know more, but we none of us really know. And there's even talk of, and really when you think about it, and this goes to you, you know, talking about if you're a Christian and you read your Bible, you know that these things 
have to happen. Yeah. Like wars. Prophecy is being fulfilled, man. Uh, one world governments and mm-hmm. a monetary system that's going to be set in place to where you cannot buy or sell. Yeah. Um, look at what's happened to Russia. Like they can't buy or sell because companies mm-hmm. have straight pulled out, um, you know, just you cannot do they cannot do business with them and yeah. even even like you look at the trucker situation too in Canada oh yeah same thing happened <clears throat> um, companies or people that had given money to the truckers mm-hmm. or involved in in that uh, protest mm-hmm. they they shut them down if they knew that you that you were part of it or if you funded it then they shut down your account like you could not withdraw money you couldn't get access to your, your money your bank account your bank account money <clears throat> I did not know that so and, holy cow. Um, you know, because really, I don't know how their how their government's all set up, but you know, they they found out people's information, you know, um, and shut a lot of people down. Um, <sighs> same thing with like cancellation; like people get canceled, you know, they lose their jobs. That's straight up communism, dude. So, but that they're it's all going to be under a system, right? We're mm-hmm. all going to be falling under one system, and uh, right. there, there's a thing out there called the Great Reset, and it's going to happen. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, that, and the Great Reset theory is not biblical you know as far as like they're not trying to be all spiritual it's just they see what's happening and Mm -hmm. it's gonna there's gonna be a reset and they're gonna you know things are gonna change Mm -hmm. um you know what they say they say everybody's you're not gonna own anything by 2030 and they said you're gonna you're gonna like it so property um cars things they said you're not gonna own it but you'll like it but you'll like it. why would you like it i probably because of universal basic income they're gonna they're gonna give you money to stay at home and you know do whatever you know and it's just gonna be a total so- socialistic government. That's what they say. Oh boy, that's right so, around the corner. Um, I think it's twenty thirty. It's it's I mean yeah it's 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 coming around the corner. But you can see how fast the wheels are turning yeah, now. Yeah. The world how 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 much has the world changed in two years? Oh dude. Um, Astronomically. Do you do you recognize your country anymore? Mm-mm. You know do you really do you recognize it? Is it is it what you remembered it as a kid? It's different. It's a different world that we yeah. live in today. Yeah. And how how you know we deal with things. So it's just it's it it's it'll change even more. Mm-hmm. So lots but, of changes to come. But like you said, if you believe really, if you believe in the Bible, you read your Bible. Um, your hope is in God. Mm-hmm. You know, if you're if you're saved, then then that that's where that's where your hope is. Exactly. And these things are only just a sign of what's yeah. to come. Yeah. So I mean, to be honest with you. I've said it a lot. I'm lucky. I'm fortunate that I get to see all this unfold. Yeah. You know, like, this is amazing. We're seeing prophecy being fulfilled right in front of our faces. Yeah. And we talk just to talk about this stuff, right, to have communication and pay attention to what's going on. But I know you're not stressed about it. I'm not stressed about it. You know, I know sometimes we, as leaders of our homes, husbands, you know, we got to <clears throat> keep a positive attitude because you got to remember our kids are watching us and they pay attention to hear a lot more than we think they do. And so I've been trying to be careful of how I say things and not make it sound hopeless because it ain't hopeless. Yeah. It ain't hopeless. So right. we got we got God on our side. There's nothing to be afraid of. Um, but anyways, I guess we'll, we'll end this one. It went a little bit longer than we were planning on, but... Um, there's our there's our outtake. There there's our outlook on things that are going on, and we'll stay in tune with it. Uh, been pumping out the content, so if you guys have been enjoying it, rate it on Spotify. Now you can rate actually podcasts on Spotify. It's, I think it's been that way for like a month or two now. You basically you can't write a review, but you can start it and give it however many stars, and then of course Apple Podcasts you can write a review and uh, rate it in there too. So all that always helps, guys. Share it. Tell people about it. Um, And we got lots more guests coming on. We'll see you guys on the next one.